Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Like, I know you were telling me you were looking off into the map, but it totally just hit me. Like, that's actually going on in the background. That entire world. That actually looks really, really nice. What? Uh, give me some examples of that. What do you mean? Oh, no, yeah, so true. Fucking planets. That's freaking sick. Chat saying that they, they love the map, but they kind of wish the center lane was a little bit higher. I wonder why. Uh -huh. I didn't show in my, um, when I first did the map overview, was the prime dunk pit because I didn't find it then. But it's right here on this if on on this side lane. Okay. The other side lane you'll notice had a um had that wall right there is right the here. dunk pit or yeah, but if you go in here it's the dunk pit. Gotcha, okay. And they got this dude holding a little ball to signify the dunkage. <laughs> I get it. That's lit. <laughs> that's actually real nice. And that's character models that they created themselves too. That's like that actually is pretty dope. Now I do know I did notice that the lighting looks really really nice. Some parts it can look a little dark. I'm assuming you it, that's going to be adjustable later with a little bit of brightness in game and everything. Right? Yeah, yeah, they should be able to adjust the gamma of the shadows so they're not quite as dark. Because like right now, like uh, Clara would be very hard for an enemy to see. I mean, you know, you got she's, she'll have the giant health bar over her head, but trying to pick her out and get and, and shoot her would be very difficult if she, when she blends in so much with the background. Dude, that is sick. You know what you should do? Sweet. Have you timed what it would be to go from the prime to the prime pit? Like, travel time? Ooh, I have not. You want to do that? Yeah, sure. Because I know um, one main concern in here. Let's check it right now. Just like an estimated... Because I know main concern for a lot of people is also rotation time, especially considering that the this jungle looks very, very wide. You're coming up on mid lane right now. Yes. Oh, so I mean, you got yeah, like a like ten to fifteen second travel time between. That's not bad. That's pretty average. Ooh, and you know what? I just peeked right there on mid. If you're at that the river on mid, there actually is really nice verticality. Like somebody was saying that they wish the center lane was higher. I yeah, mean, if if you look right there, right, if you look at that right there, it's a fucking mountain. <laughs> and and that's just the one side. The other side's even higher, really. Oh my gosh, that pad! And then there's there's a jump, a uh, little opportunity for you to jump there with a shadow. I don't know why you even need a fog, a shadow wall right there. Considering, can you jump? <laughs> can you jump in from there? Or is that just to prevent anybody on the other side to see you jump? Oh, you can oh, jump in from there. To jump in from there, yeah, Ooh. right from the jungle camp. You're right at the jungle camp. Mid needs help, and you can jump. Wow. And that wouldn't even take Kalari. That that could be any number of heroes could make that jump. That is actually really nice. That that's pretty OP right there. If you got a nice jungler, dude, Rampage could easily jump that even. Yeah. Assuming they give his jump back. Well, assuming it's the same. Yeah. Uh, let me catch up with that real quick. Uh, what game is this? This is Core Disciple. This is Core. All right, let's do the let's do the Orb Prime thing. That's like actually pretty freaking cool. Do do. Uh, dormant. The alpha, the closed alpha, is gonna be open in three weeks. But I would be I would be cautious to saying that the game is going to be released in three weeks because it's not going to be available to everybody. And I, I did notice like right here, if you were let's say you're like you're aiming at another hero, would your camera be at that angle or would it be a little bit lower? 
I don't know. There's no aim point here. Yeah, I'm assuming it's just like somewhere around where your head's at. Yeah. More or less. Wow. Prime is really like a presence going into this pit right here. Fucking Harambe is up in here. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, it really makes you feel like, whoa, you just stepped into his pit, homie. Chill. Do they have beta? Beta is not going to be until the unforeseen future. Weapon, you my sunglasses. I don't have them on right now. <laughs> They're off for a little bit. 10,000 spots to fill on the alpha. I'll be shocked, though, if, I, if a lot of people don't make it in. That's true, though. I'm curious to see as to how they're going to do that as well as, you know, with, uh, with the servers and everything. Hopefully, they do have a smooth, smooth alpha. All right, so I'm going to pull up a little timer on this side. Give me a second. And I don't know if they're going to roll out all 10,000 at once or if they're just going to roll it out in waves. It would, um, make, it would make sense in waves just to kind of stress test it as they go. Yeah. All right. You ready? Let's just say you grabbed it now and run. <laughs> run. I'm not yeah, going to use my jump. Yeah, don't even jump. Can... Yeah. We're just going to assume fat ass Narbash has it right now. He's just, he's just <laughs> buckling, busting through it. <laughs> the big old green cheeks are jiggling. <laughs> tell you what's different, Toxic. Well, I can tell you right now, uh, jungle, way more open. Way more open. I'm curious if that actually translates to a bigger jungle, bigger map, or if it's just maybe the dynamics of it. Okay, so including a little hookup, which can happen, then maybe that maybe cost you a second or two. That was 42 seconds. Almost 43. 42.94. So that's a good little hustle you got to do, like, once you got Prime Pit. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be a dangerous endeavor for sure. Do you know how much it would be, uh, let's say, like, from spawn down to the pit? Or let's say somebody back? I'm not sure. I haven't tested that out yet. Ooh, let's check it. They're releasing keys, not waves. Not all 10K at once. Well, I think what you're referring to, Stacks, what up, by the way? Is what is what we're mentioning too when we say the waves. Like they still give you the keys, but it's in waves. Like round one of the waves, you know. Let's like say like they might do like a thousand people at a time, depending on how they wish to do it. Now up here, from the towers to to spawn, that's a nice little trip. Yeah, it's a jog. I assume these will be jump pads right here. Yeah, yeah, more than likely, or hopefully at least. Okay, all right, ready. And go. Oh, it's left side now. So the, are you going to the prime pit? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. No, I might have a few hitches because I'm not. No, yeah, do it up. This is what this is what we're all going to experience when we first go in learning the map and everything. And there's no mini map as of yet. Hopefully it'll be there for the alpha. But yeah, one one thing like like I was mentioned earlier, the jungle is so much more open. Like I feel like they literally like took the map that they kind of showed in the grayscale and just kind of like magnified it a bit. It's about thirty five seconds. Interesting. So it so in that it takes longer to go from prime to and this is about river area. So it takes longer to go from prime. To the dunk than it does from the spawn to the river. Right. Through the jungle too, not even a straight line in the path. Through the lane. So that that was kind of uh their map A whenever they did the A B map testing was wider than it was long while map B was longer than it was wide. It seems like they went with a wider wider map this way. I mean it looks it looks nice right now. It really, really does. All right, now, but you're in control, man. You you tell me where to go. You let your uh let your your folks tell me where to go, and I will head there. Ooh, anything specific you guys want to see? Anything you want to check out? Oh, Toxic said when you back, the orb is going to drop. Is that confirmed? Do you know that? Uh, that is not confirmed. Okay, so it could drop. Could take it with you. That's to be determined. Big ass map needs travel mode. LOL. It would be dope to see travel mode animations, but we all know 
the complexity that that adds to everything. A lot of people loved it back in Legacy. Why it is much more important, yes. Uh, what are the closest XP camps to the center? Uh, Dorman, when you say center, do you mean uh, river, like the river? Or do you mean towards, like from Midland? Because I remember they were talking about the Wardens, right? But in this map layout, there is no specific Warden camp on each side. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, no, there's just the red buff and blue buff. Okay. So this is more old school legacy, not the whole, you know, like six Wardens on the map that they were talking about earlier. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Do you know where those buffs are at right now? I do. Like if you're going from mid lane. If I'm going from mid lane, um, to take our buff, if I was if I was on the dusk side. Well, that's a random the, dead end. That's gonna mess somebody yeah. up. Also, there are river buffs on each individual side, also, but you have to commit through the shadow wall. Okay, very monolith. So there's the uh, blue buff, and the red buff is situated in the same area on the other side. Oh, and I noticed they have minions with the buff. Yeah. So that's going to make the camp maybe a little harder, or maybe just to give you more XP to, to kind of pay off of the time. Hey, appreciate the follow, Phantom. The river's too deep, JK. Kalari almost drowned. LOL. <laughs> <coughs> Iggy and Scorch won't be able to breathe fire because they'll be underwater. Not rip. <laughs> So you think it's going to be harder for um, chat saying that it might be harder for the early game in itself because of the size of the map? No, I mean, I think because think of it like this. Whenever the jungle is this spaced out and believe it or not, I mean, I do kind of want to get like an exact reading. Let's say like from left lane to mid for rotations, if we could or something. Because okay. um, Believe it or not, like with a with a jungle that's this open, and if the camps are properly situated, kind of like what we saw in that one fog wall, like you jump the camp, you're already there in mid lane. So that's just gonna mean that jungling is gonna be an even more important role. What's there's a harvester, by the way. They did confirm that. Hey, hidden. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, something I wanted to point out too. This is gonna make this lane so much more interesting. Having one harvester that's kind of neutral because you have the mm -hmm. harvesters on either side but this one's neutral whoever can control this lane and plant this harvester will have a greater fucking economy gain over everybody else over this the other is team. this is the blue buff right this, this is, is blue lane yeah okay and this is where prime is at huh. yes interesting so i mean let's say so i mean i guess it would be so that's now a role that might actually rotate over to solo laner or the duo lane, whichever how way people end up playing it. That's not necessarily. They did confirm that they are going to kick the towers back a little bit for duo lane. Okay. This would be the solo lane right here, I'm assuming, because it is the blue side. Uh, I would assume so, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the width of the jungle? Is it too narrow or is it spacious? All right, Sane, I got you, homie. Sane, honestly spacious is an understatement bro you go into the the jungle it looks like a freaking like you just turn into a farmer you got all this land and you don't know what to do with it like it's so expanded and i like that the halls are actually really really wide there's still intricacy behind it a lot of blind spots but yeah a lot of like you know decent vantage points too like you should be able to see mid lane if you move a little bit to your right from what i saw can you uh yep right there you can see it there and if you back up a little and look uh behind that wall you can see mid lane again or what was that back there yeah mid lane so i can see that there there's definitely trajectory paths here like if you do kind of get lost you can easily just kind of go around a corner and be like oh that's the way i gotta go got it but then again there's there's a lot of intricacy i'm interested to see what the mini map looks like a little bit more bigger jungle equals more team fights uh, doesn't necessarily mean more team fight, just more space for team fights. Do we already know if fog walls block actual player vision, or are they just ward vision blockers? Sorry for the repetition, didn't answer. Oh no, you're good, Rain. I appreciate you writing it again. Um, I don't think it's been confirmed at all, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mongoose. If uh, no, they haven't confirmed the functionality of the fog walls yet. Got you. I mean, I would assume, and this is just all 
assumption, usually whenever a, a game puts up a fog wall or anything like that, it obstructs overall vision and usually the ward because a lot of wards, most wards and most MOBAs are actually line of sight wards. And if the fog wall blocks your line of sight, it's going to prevent the purpose of the whole ward in itself. If you get where I'm coming from there. Uh, generally, it just means team fights will be easier to position. All right, I'm going to start the timer. Let me know and just run through the river to mid. Ready? Go. Now, one thing I am noticing, too, there's a lot of object, like a lot of models and very minimalistic foliage. I wonder if they did that for performance purposes. Because, you know, like there's, there's a couple plants here and there. And, the, you know, they got the treetop way up above, but it's not like it's crazy with jungle. All right, so that was actually 23 seconds to rotate from suppose, you know, what we're going to call for now solo lane to mid. But I love the way that the fact that it's like divided into dark, like dusk and dawn. Yeah, they did a great job with that. It looks so clean and it, it, it's, it literally could be just a simple shader, but it looks so nice. Now, I noticed that they went with the turrets. Okay, yeah. I was just looking at the actual turret itself. Because they're both still blue on either side. They go. Now. You know what? Like, just looking at the wall right there, you see a little, like, that little blue piece on the left side? Oh, it's actually moving. Uh, look to your left on your column. Or even way back there. Like the little blue banner there, like there's actual like a river flowing through it or something like that. It's actually really, really nice. Is there water of invisibility? I don't know what you mean by that question. Toxic. Uh shadow pools, I have not seen any in this. Shadow map yet. pools, okay. I assume that's what he meant. That makes sense. That makes sense. The shadow pools. Now, do you think they should uh, Mongoose, do you think they should actually look towards bringing back shadow pools or do you think you just keeping to shadow walls is a lot easier and cleaner um i think there were problems with the shadow pools in legacy paragon they are nostalgic and fun but i don't know about their functionality and if they already have fog walls then i don't think they also need shadow wells i'm with you on there like it's cool to remember but real talk like if we actually look back to legacy how often did we use a shadow pool maybe once in a blue moon when we needed to back or if we were just hoping that you would get a gank and nobody saw you go into that pool in a corner or something? Yeah, and then the other problem is you could go inside the shadow well, throw a ward down outside of the shadow well, and then nobody could see that ward unless they were inside the shadow well. Oh, did that Which actually happen? It? Yes. I so never even noticed heroes, that couldn't take out that ward, couldn't ward it. because they couldn't if you as soon as you left the shadow pool you weren't able to strike that ward wow that's some shady shit yeah <laughs> yeah it was shady as fuck i used to abuse the shit out of it uh somebody says in their eyes map objectives are too big uh they notice that you have to raise your camera quite a lot even when fighting or prime distances seem fine but objects walls prime is too big that is kind of true. I did notice, like, when you go to Prime, if you're just looking center mass at Prime, you are kind of looking at, like, an upward angle. And I'm assuming the health bar is going to be on top of Prime or how it usually is. So in that case, if you want to see where the health bar is at, you either need to be at a distance because can you walk up to it, like, close to, like, the melee range? See, like, now look at the health bar on the top of the head. Yeah, that... I can see how that could get annoying. Like if you have to look at the health part, just kind of like glance up, unless it might, I don't know, pop out on a different side of the screen or something. Oh, hey, there's more moons up there. Nice. I didn't even notice that. I was looking at Kalari's moon. What? Kalari's moon? At... Oh, I can't <laughs> with you. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Uh, they wanted to make the jungle feel intimidating, says Chad. No, I mean, there's a definite, definite presence to it. Like, like right there, like going into the pit, looking up at our prime definitely makes it feel like, yo, you just entered his house. Like he's about to sun you. Uh, wonder if it isn't kind of productive, the fact that you have so little information within your field of view. 
I mean, that just adds more to the whole terminology of that you have to commit to going for a prime. So let's say like you walk in, right? Naturally, you're not going to walk in and leave your back towards one of the openings. So usually, at least decent players, they'll circle around and be fighting or prime. While, and or prime is actually huge. You can barely see the entrance. Holy shit. This man gained some weight. <laughs> So, like, if he's fighting or Prime here, and let's say, you know, movement and everything, yo, it's, you're you're definitely in it for the count. Like, you don't have much visibility whether somebody's going to come in from the entrances. You sure as hell don't know if somebody's going to jump in through the shadow, uh, shadow window, I'll call it, up there. So, Sagrax isn't in yet, Sereth, man. Now I have to Narbash support. Feels bad. <laughs> hey, man, don't, don't hate on my homie Narbash. Narbash is the shit. Because then you have like two shadow wall jump entrances. As a melee hero, you literally have zero vision possible ganks when doing orb. Yeah. And honestly, bro, I could just I could just see this I, as a team. Like, let's say four of us meet there. Somebody's still on mid. Somebody's still on solo. Whatever it may be. Four of us meet there. We're going for it. Next thing you know, that their entire team comes from around the corner. You literally will not know it unless you ward, which makes sense as you should be doing or unless you actually have somebody with vision maybe like a support holding back or anything but even then i step can you step out into that little water area right there with the river and kind of do a quick glance around so there is quite a bit of visibility you can see arguably three paths on each side depending on the angle if you got somebody running around back and forth can he just be in lookout like a support or whatever so, I mean, if, if you place a ward on each on either side, you easily have decent vision, especially if they're line of sight wards. So you can see them coming. So that's, that's definitely helpful right there. There's so many camps that I imagine jungler uh, should have an item or a relic to help the jungler. Usually there are jungle-specific cards in, more, in most MOBAs. And I don't know about so many camps. Have you gotten a chance to count them? Or to the uh, best of your abilities? Three, three on either side. Three white camps on either side. Three white camps plus buff on either side. And the buff does have two smaller minions also. Yes. So, I mean, you could technically say four and a half camps if we're talking buffs also. Yeah. Interesting. I actually wonder if people uh, with, let's say, 21 by 9 monitors or those playing with stretch image like Counter Strike can get minor advantages out of field abuse abusements. I mean, I'm assuming anybody with that type of a ratio would have an advantage in any game, even if you were just playing old school Paragon. If it were supported, you you easily got advantage the more vision you got. But now it's gonna be another thing of will they support it? Whoa, can you go back to that minion real quick? That was a stocky minion. Is that red or is that just normal? That's a normal white camp minion. It's uh, all the all the camps are a large minion like this with two smaller minions flanking them. Oh, so even the buff some like do you think this is going to have the same health as the buff? Or do you think the buff is naturally going to be a little bit tankier? At that least I what you're expecting. I don't know. That I don't know. I do know that they still plan on being able to pull minions like you can do in like Dota mm -hmm. where you can add a if you know oh, the and time let them spawn, spawn behind. Yeah. I mean that'd be so, cool. That way you don't waste the wave. Like if you just got there, and a lot, like a lot of people wonder, like what, why you would do some shit like that. Imagine you just got to the camp and you noticed five seconds a new wave is gonna spawn. You back up, pull your minions to a clear area. The new wave spawns in, and you can still keep killing those minions in that clear area. But the whole point is, you don't miss out on that XP just because you haven't caught up with your camps. And uh, from what. I've been told. So the 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 point would be mainly it would mainly be a mid laner responsibility to, to stack some camps for the jungler. And once the jungler, if they do stack that camp, once the jungler clears that camp, there's also an economy and experience gain for the mid laner who stacked the camp or anyone who stacked the camp for the jungler. Oh, like an assist on that jungler, like if okay, right. interesting. I want that's actually kind of cool. I wonder how they're actually going to keep track of that, but that's actually super dope. So, so imagine being the mid laner, coming out, taking the river buff, noticing, and I guess you're, you know, you're very generous mid laner. You know, you're not, you're not going to be in your mid lane for just a split <laughs> second. 
Because think of it like this. Go back into mid lane, jump over if you can. Let's say Gideon could easily j teleport over. But let's say we're Bellica. Go ahead and pretend you're going to kite that camp. Start. See? You went and grabbed your buff. And then you're like, you know what? Let me see if this camp is here. Bam. You sit there. You hit them. Now you back up a little bit. And now they're out fighting with you in the stairs. New one went in. Now you go back into mid lane. So now that camp now has six minions. Check it. All right. Still gone. You go that night. The camp that camp now has six minions, which helps the jungler, which you get some benefit of like an assist off of it. I would say, or maybe like partial partial EXP off of it, maybe whatever they decide to do. But as a mid laner, you just use 53 seconds, almost an entire minute to help out your jungle, which is, I don't know how, like, I'm, it's going to be interesting. I don't know how many people are going to do that unless they're already there. Mainly yeah. for the, mainly for the fact that that's, bro, that's almost a whole minute you're missing out on CXP and your own hundred percent CXP for possibly getting back a percentage of what goes to the jungler. Right. Unless you're really, really either trying to help your jungle, or unless you're just like, yo, I got Jay Leo on my team, bro. I need to feed this man <laughs> right now. Like, uh, like, unless you got something like that, I don't see people doing that just too much. Cool feature. Like, you know, like I say, you're, you're doing the rotations and you're like, you know what? I'm on my way. Might as well kind of do this here real quick. But, um, uh, Rain uh, says they have made this out of the gray map testing with Ambi, however. There n has never really been visually appealing iteration before. Yeah, sure. It's not like they just came up with a randomly new map. They did have two potential maps when that it came down to it, and then at that point, you just they just kind of chose one really and decided to bring that one to life. On Dota, uh, at least stacking creeps is the support job. Interesting. Yeah, that's what I was about okay. to point out. I think that would be a great thing for the support to do if they can leave their carry for a little bit, go stack a camp. And, yeah, like you know, just freeze the lane. A hard time getting their own um, CXP anyway, so that we might. Yeah, so while they're out with a the carry, then they're getting the help that the jungle is going to give them because of yeah. supporting. Yeah, honestly, that's yeah. That that would be the only thing I would say, unless somebody's just randomly going through a rotation. Because if not, you're just missing out on way too much valuable time. Because a minute, let's say you push up a minute, it could easily be quarter tower early game. Oh yeah. Shit like that makes a difference. Another thing I want to point out: this isn't their final map either. Like this oh, is going to be the next test you... map for people to try out and give them feedback on, and then they will improve this map from there. You think this is the one that's going to make it to alpha? Um, I, that, this is the one that's going to make it to the next map test, and I think they'll probably make changes based on feedback, and then that will be the alpha map. Okay, nice. Um, I think this is going to be their baseline, though. Chat, chat saying that with the size of the map, more camps could be present. See, but that also is going to, you, you guys got to keep in mind also, that's also going to have to vary with the speed of the lanes. Can you jump over it? Oh, there you go. That's also going to depend on the, the speed of the minions and how frequent the lanes are going to be. Because let's say they put in extra jungle camps in there, but now the jungle can easily clear camps that are way too close to each other faster than the laners can actually clear a wave or, you know, push it or et cetera, especially early game wise. So I don't know, man. Like it's very, it's very hard to tell unless you actually get in there and actually, you know, start doing your own little rotation. And then you could be like, you know what? It's taking way too fucking long. You know what? This is actually way like, it's actually fairly easy. But then the travel time in between the camps is more the punishment and the skill aspect of it. That you got to be very tactic about. If it can give cost benefit support, gets a portion, yeah. Um, they did rotation testing yesterday, and it seemed extremely too standard. What do you mean by that taste? That the rotation testing seems standard? Because we just we just timed it out over here. It's actually not that bad rotation wise. Appreciate it, Beast. Welcome, homie. Welcome, Tadis. 
this map is actually really, really nice. Now, can you do core to core so we can see how long that would take? Because sure. I, I have a feeling it's going to be like monolith all days. Like it's going to take us three to five minutes just to cross. <laughs> The real question is, is Core going to be cross-platform? Whether any of the remakes are when and if they're coming to console, still to be determined, and whether it's going to be cross-platform, still to be determined. One thing that you guys got to keep in mind also is, uh, specifically when you're doing something like cross-platform, usually you need your own client within the game to be able to connect everybody, because usually a client like Steam isn't going to communicate with a client like PlayStation Network. That's why when you see a lot of games, like, for example, how Epic did with Fortnite, Paragon, uh, Rocket League even does it, they have a client within the game itself that helps communicate regardless of what console you're playing. You're just communicating through their own independent client, but that's going to add a whole lot more networking, coding, and a whole lot of more complexity that would be to expecting a lot from these early companies. Could it come down the road? Maybe, but I wouldn't hold my hopes up for the time being. Casual mode, yes. Rank mode will be separate between PS4 and PC. I can see that, just to make it a little bit fair. If they, if they were to implement rank at a certain point, you know, and there are multiple consoles, keeping that separate, that'd be a lot nicer and a lot more fair, so to speak. But then again, if you're, if you're going to separate the rank mode, you typically separate the casual mode as well because you're going to have to be running independent servers to be doing all that I think it won't be too long or so alright you ready 3 2 1 go uh, it takes about as much time to traverse as it does with other MOBAs I mean just walking yeah and that's, and that's what we're going to check on here because I don't know how many people actually play other MOBAs you'd be surprised like oh hiccup uh oh oh and uh, let's start it over again <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh that's something i already told them about is getting caught on that ledge the source is frequently asked questions before. ah nice oh, yeah, another did post their faq yesterday yeah i don't gotta go over that all right and go he said whoa kalari yeah <laughs> Hmm. Now, like I was saying, a lot of people that played Paragon, that was their first MOBA. Like, I know Paragon was my first MOBA, and that introduced me to a whole bunch of other MOBAs, and then I lost my life from there. No lifing. But I would say for the average person that doesn't play a MOBA, like, especially if they're considering to go into PS4 market, the, the one cautious thing i would say about the ps4 market is yes they're powerful they're strong great way to grow the game also but a introducing to the ps4 market means you need to make sure that you have a very good education system in place you're gonna have to treat teach people that never played before what is a moba and not only along those lines okay so what what is this currency thing going what is you know what? That was only a minute and six seconds. That's not long at all. I was going to say, it should be a minute. I know their goal from core to core was like to traverse an entire lane was, was a minute. Yeah, that's, that's not bad at all. Interesting enough, it actually felt like you going to orb, because you going to orb took you maybe like between 30, 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. Which is about from here to the middle, middle of the map. But now, could we do going to the core, let's say, from solo lane? On the right, on the right I believe it is, right? Maybe? Yep. Okay. I think so. I mean, I don't know what they plan for their solo lane, but usually, you know, blue buff is solo yeah. lane. All right, ready? Uh, and ready? go. So this, is, this would be then, let's say, like, the usual path, at least. Let's say, like, if... Your solo laner is just a fucking boss. This man just took out T1, T2, inhib. Your mid still struggling with T1. I mean, real talk, y'all should group up and take that mid. Well, let's say if you're just trying to get to their core. Yeah, honestly, travel time? 
interestingly enough, even though you're going off to the side, like right now you're at 37 seconds. So it's honestly not that much different. Wow. So lane travel in itself is pretty smooth. Like you're saying, this is the the shorter lengthwise, but width wise, like I think it actually might take longer to go from the harvester to the prime dunk. Let's check that real quick. Do you okay. All right, go ahead and do that. Stream is freezing. I'm sorry, guys. If there are any network difficulties, that's something that we're working on fixing and adjusting here. Yeah, you're Taste. really forced to go around a lot of things here. Yeah, Taste says it should be 45 seconds. Without any special, uh, you know, using any of your utility or movement. Shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> he said... Rip. <laughs> okay, so minus that that big pits there. Minus a few seconds. Okay, I can see that. So I could say I could see how a clean run would be 45, 46 seconds. Like if you know exactly where you're going, and even if you use mobility even faster, maybe. Or do we know if that 45 was with the uh, the mobility? You know what? Can you can you go to the tower real quick and just look down the lane, like look towards the river? That rock thing there was actually a really nice touch. I saw I saw you point that out in your video. Everybody, make sure you guys go follow Mongoose on YouTube, please. We wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for him. That's actually super nice, and that's a shadow wall into the jungle. I see on the right, maybe. Right. And uh, there's kind of an indicator that you are coming up on the rock pile if you're in the jungle, because you see these rocks right here that are kind of tumbled down, kind of let you know where you are. Nice. It's really nice. So this would be dual lane status. Is it me or is it... Can you step down onto the tower? Do we know if this lane is just as wide, or is it, do you think it's just because of the models on the left and right? It might make it seem a little bit more cramped towards the tower. <laughs> Uh, this one is seems a little narrower because of the there's no harvester and that harvester is on an open platform, whereas on this one there's no That's open platform. It's all of closed off. Of gotcha. So, hmm. wow. And you know what? Considering that this is going to be the dual lane too, seeing like somebody disappearing behind that fog wall on the left or the right is really going to make this dual lane. A dangerous spot right there. I wonder what size their wards are going to be. I wonder if one ward is going to be able to cover both of those entrances. Because like how, like how Paragon wards were actually pretty, pretty big, you know? Yeah. Whereas opposed to other MOBAs, their wards might be substantially smaller. I'm also kind of wondering if you can place the wards up top. Like if you can place it up here. Mm. So I don't know if you remember doing that. Usually, yeah, you place yeah. your ward up high so a melee hero couldn't knock it out. Bro, I found out in, uh, the hard way in a competition match. That's a no go. <laughs> Compet <laughs> in competition matches, they'll get mad at you for that shit. Like, you, that's just straight. Like, yo, broke the rule. They forfeit the match. If you put a ward oh, where wow. a melee hero can't reach it, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It's uh, kind of abusing things a, bit, a little bit. I, would, I mean, I would, if there's a surface for you to stand on, it would only make sense that this, that same surface you could actually place a ward on. Yeah. I can't look at the clouds. There's a wall. Oh, I got you. They are very, very tall walls, but it also kind of, like, immerses you into the world. Like, what's going on right in front of you right now. Even though there are, there's like, like you pointed out, there's a lot of beautiful things going on, especially in the background. You know, like, like the like they the the fact that they put the clouds there, the, you know, the planets, moons, etc. Oh, oh shit! And she's out. Okay. 
Wow, that rock if actually takes over. That like on the a stream, I'd like to use that to report that as a bug. I got you. I'll send that to you. But wow, you know what? Those rocks take up like a a good quarter of that tower. Like you see how open the tower is here. You know what I'm saying? Like like actually yeah. moving around within your tower. That those rocks literally are in tower length. I wonder if you can get hit by the tower up there. It would make, it would make sense that you can. That's a huge chunk of the circle being taken. Oh yeah, I didn't even notice that. Good, good eye, man. Good eye. So it so it is gonna be. I mean, playing within your tower, especially if like there, like you know how you kind of got stuck. I can see somebody like Rampage or something or Narbash getting easily stuck trying to go through that little crevice. That you probably won't be able to. Maybe you can, depending on how they do the models. Depending on how true they keep to the models, I guess you could say. But. Yeah. Wow. That's going to be. That's going to be rough right there. OMG. You, uh, Toxic says this should be solo lane. Sex says that wouldn't be fair. But the fact that this is the duo lane, you got the. It's. Or, you know, if it is a dual lane, considering the, the, the damage buff is going to be on this side. Considering you got a narrower tower, a more cluttered tower. And then you got two shadow, shadow walls on each side. Wow, that's going to that's gonna add up for a very complicated dual lane. I think that tower needs to be shifted over or the lane it needs to be widened out. I mean, I kind of like the fact that it's kind of taking, taking that from the lane, you know, it's like, hey, well, you know what? Like it's there, but it adds another whole sense of verticality. Like if you think of a, of a support like phase, for example, let's say your, your ADC is playing from tower phase can sit up there with her tether if she still keeps it and easily just pull homie up way up there. But if it is within the tower, that means it's also punishable. So somebody that comes out of that little jungle wall right there, somebody that comes out of that little jungle wall right there in the corner, expecting for a quick gank, and completely forgets that that's tower zone, as soon as they step on the rocks, bam, getting hit by a tower. I'm going to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Yeah, do your thing. Look at that background, guys. It's definitely a still image, but it still looks beautiful. Definitely looks nice. The fact that they added the little bit of lightning to the planets or to the moon back there to make it interactive and everything else is a still image, I, I still like it. I would say this is like you're sitting inside of a globe that's painted. You look around and it's just a still image everywhere. Really nice touch. Definitely saves them on processing and everything and actual, uh, you know, being able to run the game as smooth because the main thing that you need to render would be the actual in-game, the, all the in-game shit that's going on. When I saw the background, it's just a still image that you're looking around on. Because I did notice that the clouds don't even move. So, it's actually a nice optical illusion that they're doing there. They're making the outer world a picture so you don't gotta worry. Uh, let me see. He said, holy shit, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think of it like this. Real shit. This is a little glitch that Kalari can get up there. Nine times out of ten. Hey, appreciate the follow up, bars. Nine times out of ten, you probably won't even see half of this shit. You probably won't even see that the clouds aren't moving. Unless you sit there and stare at it. Like, it's a, it's a really nice picture with some really nice depth. It would be... To give you guys a, a, scenario, uh, a similar scenario, you guys ever seen those... Those, um interactive panoramic pictures that you can literally walk look around and it looks like you're in the world from a still point of view but it's actually just a still image that's exactly what's going on right here but that point of view that's right at the center the focal point where everything rotates on that would just be the map and you're sitting on and you're walking around on that map it's clever it's really clever I like how they did a little bit of Photoshop to blend in the two different moons. Like, what I, what I was just pointing out is that um, you ever seen the, um, the 360 pictures that people post online? 
You ever run into those mongoose? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How the map, how the out, how the exterior of the map is literally like a 360 picture, and the map itself is a focal point in the middle. Oh yeah. Cause like you know, like the the clouds don't move, and and now if they're actually animated, that would be cool. But I can I see how it makes sense that all that looks so beautiful as a still image. That you're just kind of looking around and it's like, oh my god, it all looks so awesome. But it's actually a still image. Even the the, the clouds are a still image. If you see on there, like right in front of their uh, the the dusk tower, I guess you could say you can see the clouds right in front of it are still. Yeah, that would add a I nice. Think they could make those move. I, they probably could. I don't know if they will though, because I was saying like. Having all that beautiful stuff, but having it be a still image definitely helps towards the rendering and your graphics card and everything, like all the processing, post processing, and shit like that. If you get where I'm coming from, so it's actually really clever that they have this entire world outside that you can look at, but isn't actually moving. You're just rendering in a picture. You get me? Oh yeah. That's yeah, actually they, they, they thought of a lot of things. It's actually really, really clever. Hey, Quality Mike, thank you for the follow. I've been watching your homies, by the way. Go follow him, Quality Mike on YouTube. What up, homie? Hey, Quality, he's going to be uh, hosting for the minions with us. Uh, nice. I think, I think like four four weeks from now. Ooh, everybody, make sure you guys are there watching for the minions. I watch every single one. Y'all should too. Damn, bro. Can do you? What do you have your settings on? Are you able to change that right now? I I, I can't. Um, I'm running this one at 1060 right now. I'm at 1080. Fortunately, died, but oh no, I got you. But you like it can't be adjusted at all right now. No, I can't. I can't adjust it right now. Okay, I got you. So I'm just wondering, like, is that what the foliage is gonna look like from a distance? You know, just paying attention to the detail. Like everything is very, very well detailed. But you notice how the foliage? I mean, it, it looks like foliage. Like if you're looking between low and ultra. Looks like it might be a, like either medium or maybe even arguably high when it comes down to it. You get me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can definitely tell that foliage is like nice accents, but like the actual models, the model quality here is the biggest thing that I would say. How many FPS do you get in there actually? Um, you got uh, decent frames with the 1060 right now, right? Yeah, I'm getting a uh, hundred right now. About a hundred moving around. Th their goal is uh 144. Hey, 144 gold would be more than fine. Um, one thing that impressed me, um, mm. since I've been, I've been learning about how to make these assets run in Epic, and um, the way they've done the acceleration deceleration, like you can notice that she, it takes it takes her just a second to take off, right? Mm. And her legs actually are. Her, her footsteps are closer as she's moving slower, and then they extend, and her stride extends as she gets faster, which means they've been doing some speed warping and distance matching stuff, which is very exciting because that was a huge difference between Paragon and yeah. pretty much every other game. <laughs> hmm. And I did hear how you guys were talking about, like, how, you know, affecting the different characters and everything as to, you know, like, like a rampage slowing down, etc. Now... I'm curious how this is going to go play into effect with the actual casting of abilities and basic attacks and everything. Because I can definitely see somebody miscalculating their distance even on a quick cast because their character slowed down. So that's just going to add another level of skill that you're going to have to keep it, keep in mind there. Like, let's say, like, when you go to chase somebody, when you go to stop out of nowhere. I mean, stopping seems pretty quick. Even though it does like a slight animation after you stop, it does seem like you stop on a dime. Am I wrong there? Yeah, you stop on a dime. Okay, got gotcha. you. Uh, on a 1060, 144 FPS on medium settings would be really decent optimization. Oh, for sure, bro. For sure. Honestly, even if if you could lower some of the settings, like let's say like all medium settings, like we we're saying, and if you can hit 144 FPS, that should be on a 1060. That's actually more than fine that would actually open up quite a bit because even slower cards 1050 9 series even might be able to get into the hundreds on those same settings so that wouldn't be bad at all that's some that's some really nice optimization there damn you guys got any questions on chat as to things that you, you guys want to check out or anything like that 
Animation is disorienting, but yeah, you stop on a dime. Yeah, it just looks like her body decides to stop a second later than the actual character model does. Or like she just kind of like catches traction. Almost kind of. Because he does kind of like kick her legs out past her. I wonder if they're going to add that into the momentum thing. Like that animation right there. Like she actually yeah. has to slow down. You got me? Yeah, Epic built those animations in specifically for that. Um, but they're supposed to uh, kind of decide where you're going to stop and then build the animation in. And um, it will only do a little bit of the animation if you're just coming to like a quick stop. I got but you. if you're like ha if you're really hauling and you and you come to a stop, it should play more of the animation. Right now, it looks like it's playing the same animation, no yeah. matter how the distance. Well, no, no, it's not really. Uh, Quality Mike says Opolis said they you shouldn't be able to stop on a dime, didn't he? Well, I, I did hear him say that that was the overall goal. The fact that momentum was actually going to be something. Like, if you get into full running, you're not going to be able to just stop on a dime. Even though I don't see too much of that implemented. But then again, it is a Kalari. I'm curious to see if, you know, a character like Narbash again is going to have different dynamics, different momentum, you know, logic to it. Because it definitely would be easier for a Kalari to stop on a dime. Than it would be for a rampage or an Arbash to stop on a dime. At least, you know, if we're thinking semi realistically here. Yeah, it would be it would be super tight if they actually make an independent pre hero. Um a spider with six legs needs a different animation pattern. Let's hope. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope. If they I mean it'd be kinda cool if they had to bring that. Is it me or are the graphic graphics blurry? Well, I want you guys to be mindful of a few things here now. This is something that we're looking at over discord live screen sharing so i mean and it is 720p if you get where i'm coming from so be mindful that if we were to up the quality to 1080p it would look that much finer and that much cleaner and then you also have to add you know networking bitrate bandwidth and all that if it ever get becomes even the slightest bit of blurriness but I do, I do see what you're saying. I do see that overall looking around, like on my screen, it is a little bit on the blurry side, but that is because it is uh, at least something in just mainly a 720p image. You got to think of that. It does look very clear to me. To, so, Okay, perfect. And I'm, and, you know, I'm the one running it. So, um, They're saying that the, the whole momentum thing would actually make dodging abilities more difficult. And that, that's also a good point too, because imagine if it takes a split second for you to get into actual full running, that means that like a Quang coming from around the corner, uh, you know, tethering you with a sword is more than likely going to be a lot more accurate considering you just went from stopping to going. You still got that like delayed slightly, like the slight molasses feeling getting into movement there. But now then again, if you, if you stagger from left to right, does the animation process start again or... Like, if you're just running around like crazy, is it still going to... Does the speed stay, is what I'm curious. Uh, she slows down every time you switch directions. Okay, got you. So that's, some, that's something for you support people out there for freaking jungles with ganking and everything. If you see somebody just running around sporadically... Wait for the shift, because while they like while it shifts from left to right, not only do they have to slow down to stop and turn back around, but then they have to slowly speed up. So that's a definite slower movement. It's gonna happen there. Wow, that just means CC is gonna be really powerful with that mechanic if you think about it. Oh yeah, get you a team with CC. CC wins the game. Metabuff seems to have their stuff together, and the map is already pretty polished and beautiful, to be honest. Uh, in the For the Minions, they did say they're working on moving appearances, so it's not something I'm worried about. Oh, no, no, yeah. If, when we're talking about just, like, visuals, visuals can easily be fixed. I'm just over here thinking, speculating, and contemplating as to actual mechanics that they're introducing to the game, how that's going to play out. Because I can definitely see characters with heavy cc definitely taken over especially like let's say like if we could consider mid lane like if you put a belica versus a gideon i mean gideon has that extra mobility which is going to help him for the buffs and everything but 
like especially with that moving around, that means that Bellica is now more likely. Let's say Bellica sucked before. Bellica is now more likely to land her knock up because of that slow in the actual increasing momentum, decreasing momentum ever so slightly. So that's just little things to be able to be con considerate of there, especially if you're playing somebody that doesn't have that much CC, like a Gideon, for example. Can Mangoose take Kalari's cape off, <laughs> JK? Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think if Mangoose takes her cape off, it's for a different purpose. We're going to keep it PG. <laughs> We're going to keep it PG. Uh, you'd have to move it like a figure eight rather than going left and right, yeah? You'd have to literally just kind of loop around. I did want to say these, um, like the path in that we're working on top. Yeah, they, they, uh, this will not be in the alpha. I don't believe they said that they're okay. probably going to put, um, invisible walls up kind of like what they had you from going up. You know, there were, there were places you weren't supposed to get to in Paragon. They just put invisible walls to prevent you from doing that. So, I, uh, I can imagine they're going to be able to run around easily. like this in the, um, in the alpha. It's something they are playing with, experimenting with, have, have, possibly having these elevated paths through the jungle, but it's not something that they are uh, sold on quite yet. Dude, honestly, I'm, I, I, I'll give them a thousand percent props. I will give them a thousand percent props for the fact that, like, the map design, how, how nice it looks, and not only that, like, how genius it is, the fact that they decided to not render in the outer world instead make the actual models themselves taller so when you do glance at the outer world it looks beautiful but you don't realize it's a still image it's actually freaking like a great idea if you think about it so you can focus a performance on the actual map itself dude all these little crevices like in little corners like just like like if you do a 360 right here like, you know like that the statue little crevices right there the diamond pattern on the wall Looks like another statue back there. Rocks broken. It's a really good map. It's a really, really nice map. And you see that little line uh, with the etching that you're at right there? That's probably how far you have to pull them out before you can cut them. Right, yeah. Probably going to be their indicator right there. It's actually not bad. Do they have shortcuts to a jungle for heroes with high mobility? They do. They actually have a lot of them. Can you, can you show them that camp that leads right into mid lane? Oh, this is another harvester right here. Interesting. So they have a solo lane harvester and jungle harvesters also. Okay. Wow. I wonder if it would be best for to have the solo laner handle that as opposed to the jungle or just have jungle rotate over to the solo lane, similar to Legacy Days. So look at this camp right here. This camp is right by mid lane. There's actually, you got to make like a, you got to exit mid lane through the river make a u-turn and then you end up at this camp right here where he's at but heroes with high mobility can easily like jump over let's say gideon comes to steal this camp bam back in his mid lane in a split second that is actually really really nice if, if gideon wants to be greedy but not over actually uh not overextend, he can is like he can easily come steal the camp jump over almost back on his turf not bad Galarius jump would cost mana it would have a cooldown so it wouldn't really be that op yeah that's totally right. that's totally right like heroes that have mobility as their kit also have to sacrifice that mana because of it so it is kind of like a hey you know what you're taking a penalty for using the mobility as it should be uh the idea of bending mid so you can't see all the way to the core was a good idea oh because uh you're referring to rotations from the jungle i'm not disappointed that they and what they've done not to mention there's still ongoing polls where they try and get feedback from the audience or supporters. Yeah, they, one thing that they're doing, and it's actually pretty awesome, the polls and everything, they're actually very engaging with the community. They're very, very engaged. And as to the fact that, like, they changed some things. Like, what was it? Um, FaZe got replaced for Decker, right? Right. Which I'm kind of sad for. But, hey, the community asked for it, and they did it. And the fact that they can do it on a dime like that within the month, that I'm actually impressed with. Yeah, I'm that one. Yeah, I'm impressed with it. If they could pull it off, that that does if they can pull it off, yeah. a little bit. You think it's going to be a, a a glitchy, buggy Decker compared to the rest? I, I I hope not. I mean, 
That's I actually think we're all used question. to a glitchy buggy Decker. She didn't. Work I mean, <laughs> facts. But you know what? Um, that's actually that brings up a good question. Do you think? What if? Do you think they're actually working on all the heroes passively in the background? Like they had, since you're considering they have a much bigger team. You think they were, they were already working on the Decker? Like you know, like somebody that's a little bit lower on the dev team, possibly working on those in the back. I'm like you know what? Almost hey, definitely. This just got bunted. It just got punted up to the top. Now they, a lead developer has a decker now and you know what she's already three quarters finished he just has to finish her so that might yeah, be why exactly they're so versatile yeah. yo everybody thank you again for all the follows and all the love everybody but um so you can definitely i mean from your tower you can definitely see all the way back you can see if somebody crosses over that's definitely gonna make rotations interesting now if you're in the river not so much but you know what in between tier one and tier two, you can definitely see it. Well, hold on, let's be real here because there is that verticality. Unless you're tall ass Grim or tall ass Sevrog. Like Kalari right now, she can't easily see if somebody walks across back there unless she backs up and looks at it from her tower. Now you can see the, the pathing easier. But as soon as you walk up, let's say like you're in the middle of a fight or everything. You got an annoying ass Gideon dropping rocks on you every couple seconds. You're moving back and forth on the lane, etc. You don't necessarily have vision unless you go to the far left. Go into that far left, it, it gives you more vision. But now you're hella fucking close to that wall right there. Yeah. All, all that mid has to say is like, yo, <laughs> this fucking Morgesh over here, it's like she's camping that fucking right side mid wall. Just come out through there. I'll, I'll drop a rock on her immediately, pull her back in, Grux. Bam, she's done it in a couple seconds. So you could, yo, I like how there's a lot, there's a lot, a lot of ways that you can get punished. They're, they really thought this out very, very well. I don't think they hit on, uh, I don't think they hate on the game more than people are looking forward to it. That sentence confuses me a bit. Every post I've made ever kind of asking people to comment on it and whatnot had, has more support than hate, but there are those who hate for sure. Well, you're not wrong, but I wouldn't say there are those, like there's more of those that hate. I would definitely say the haters are louder. Like when you like shit, we're pretty peaceful about it. We like shit. And I know that uh, in the For the Minions video, you brought this up, Mongoose. But those haters, bruh, like those are the ones that will go, like that one individual goes out of his way to make that Reddit post. Post it on the Discord, post it on his own personal Facebook, post it on their Facebook page, share it to all his friends because of how salty he is. So, just because the naysayers are louder doesn't mean they have more impact. Don't forget that. <laughs> it always starts with that they won't show the gameplay. It's a scam. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all think about mid lane that had sloped up to an apex at the center? Rather than one that slumps down a valley in the center. Well, I think the slump, so, I think slumping down is actually smarter because of that point that you guys mentioned of the visibility. Because a sloped up mid is probably going to have visibility all the way back to the core. What do you think on that, Angus? Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, the sloped up mid is definitely um, the way it was in Legacy. But I think coming down, you know, I didn't even think of that till, um your viewers said that not being able to see somebody rotating in behind is, is kind of big. It's kind of huge. Yeah. And um, I like, I like that they, they kept it sloped all the way down to the river like that. Especially with the, all these extra, you know, John, like we're going to call them <laughs> smoke walls, smoke, uh, shadow windows. That's what it was. Shadow windows, especially with all these little shadow windows, shadow walls. Now that spot right there, I think is like, the coolest, the one that's going to fuck people up the most because they're going to think that's safe. But if you look back, the ring of the tower is still reflected up there. If you look back by the jungle entrance. See that ring of the tower? Ooh, yeah. That means you can get hit by the tower where you are and not even realize it. Like if you're coming in for a flank or something. I mean, for a gank. And Yep, that matches up. That is definitely... That's all in tower radius so the fact that even though it can't see you weirdly enough it might still hit you 
It would actually be pretty funny if it goes to shoot you and it, it hits a rock. That would actually be pretty fucking <laughs> funny. I, I would laugh my ass off at that, actually. Keep ducking back here every time the tower starts to shoot. Yo, everybody, <laughs> apparently uh, <laughs> your video, like the first three comments say they won't show gameplay. It's a scam. <laughs> Yo, this is, yeah, I'm, I'm just in awe looking at it, checking everything out. Like, of course, we'd love to see gameplay. That'll come later on in the month. Don't forget, guys, here April 27th is going to be the closed alpha. And I can assume people can expect gameplay, whether it be streaming or, you know, like an actual YouTube video up until, at that point. When is alpha? April 27th. Iceman. But as for... There was... <coughs> oh, go ahead. But... Sorry. I'm going to do it up. I was just going to say, there, there was gameplay in the proof of concept. It was very basic gameplay, and it wasn't, wasn't on this map. Like the three, the three girls running around? That, well, not just the three girls running around. I mean, they showed people killing minions and stuff. It was choppy, and it wasn't great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was like in the of, and everything. that was months ago, but it was gameplay. Yeah. I think, well, one thing that, again, referring back to Mongoose's video, everybody check him out on YouTube. One thing that you pointed out is the fact that a lot of people actually don't know what it, what like everything that goes into like coding, making a game, and everything. Like even I can't say that I know a lot about it and everything. But you guys gotta remember, like even at a crude stage, that everything might look weird, everything might be super buggy. It that can still be considered gameplay. Like he said, we did see gameplay. Was it polished? Probably not. That's probably why we only saw like two seconds at a time. But does the engine actually work to them walking around basic attack? Like, look, right here, Kalari is able to use her abilities. Can you dagger throw? Uh, no, I only have the uh, double jump part of Shadow Dance. Double, okay, got it. Double jump and then basic attacks. I mean, the animations are there, if you get where I'm coming from. So if you, if you want to think about it, this is gameplay, but just very accrued version of it. So it's really going to come down to the fact that whenever you start adding more heroes in here and add their full kits and abilities, similar to how, you know, some of us did with a, with a predecessor launch, going into the point that it's like, okay, so, you know, what needs reporting? Was this ability buggy? Did this ability actually execute? You know what? I just ulted, nothing happened. Or I just ulted uh, as a howitzer. I got nothing but rockets falling for the next three minutes in my ears. That's annoying as fuck. You know, all glitches that can happen, that's actually pretty fucking funny. That the model reaches way up there. You're like three feet above, you're like two, three feet above the tower. Now, hmm. I'm curious to see, because with you, like with the elevated towers and everything, you remember how, how uh, Epic with Paragon at one point, they decided to do it like when the tower went down? It would make like a kind of like a like a sloped, like not necessarily this tower. Go to the next one. The slope up with the stairs. I'm curious to see if they're actually gonna make like some sort of animation, like a down tower kind of fills in the gap, or if a down like you know just kind of like completes the stairs, or if a down tower is just gonna disappear and then you got like a little hole that you can fall into. I don't know. I think that would be cool if the down tower filled in the gap and then provided, you know, more yeah. access to the. I would core. just have you. You have to be a little bit more aware of your surroundings. That would make it cool. You're not wrong. See, I want to know if it will be possible to dodge turret shots. Huh. Let me re finish reading the rest of this. I think it would be interesting if you were up on that rock ledge and got behind the wall before the shot hit you. Oh, okay. I got you. I mean. It would be kind of cool if a model could stop the turret shot, very similar to an ally stopping the turret shot. I, I mean, that would be a cool dynamic, but I guess that would mean that would be all up to how the tracking of the turret goes. I mean, that'd be actually pretty cool. Can you imagine, like, oh, like you're, you're, pile over here. like you're, you're, yeah, you're about to be a dying, uh, freaking dying sparrow. That tower is about to get that last shot on you. We, we can all tell the timing. You're about to get hit by it. Rampage steps in the way, tanks the tower shot for you. Even though it's still targeting you. That would be pretty cool. 
like if the shots could actually be stopped similar to Grimm's ult. Oh, yeah. Or like the actual character models like right there. Like if you actually put something between you and the tower, regardless of being in line of, with, within the targeting range, will you be able to stop it? Or like that little wall. Can you hide behind that wall up there? And still be in the tower? Like that little corner on the left? Yeah, you would still be in the tower, but it can't see you at all. I wonder if you would get hit right there. That would be uh, like a ranged hero could hop over here, pop a couple shots on somebody, and then hide. Then hide before the tower. But keep in mind, the tower is targeting them the whole time. It hasn't stopped. They just have to time in between the hits. That wouldn't be too successful. That's just asking to get killed. You do all that shit. You're already in their jungle. You got the, you're got you in between their tower, their jungle. You're going to have a chimera come up out of nowhere like, hi, buddy. Like, you, that's some... That's some that's some run to from here? Yeah. yeah that's, that's some bronze shit if you, want, or if you want to troll. Troll or bronze shit? But um, depends on... I think it would be cool depending on the projectile being fired. Uh, instead of a tanky person such as Rampage to take the shot, yeah. So question is, which one will be better, core or predecessor? You know what? That's a good question, Blood. What up, Blood, by the way? <laughs> Hope you're good, homie. Everybody go follow Blood. I'll say this. I think it's ignorant for people to think which one will be better. Because, yeah, a lot, both of the, like, when you're considering core and predecessor, they're going to have a lot of similarities, probably year one, especially when they're going to have the same heroes and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet quite a hefty amount that as these games as individual games progress you're going to see these going in their own independent direction that are going to start to vary yeah they might have the first couple heroes that are the same maybe some of the assets are the same like you know like tower you know the floor on the tower and everything but as they go on to develop their own map as they go on to develop their own characters these are going to be so totally different the only reason people are considering these two as competition is because they're starting with the same assets. But as these games develop, I think it'd be foolish to think that either one of these games, either one of the four total games is going to die out or be better this and that. Because even better is subjective. As long as there are competitive players playing the game, there will be a competitive scene to it. Whether they incorporate ranked or not, that's a whole different story. I mean, you saw people get a competitive scene in Paragon. We never had ranked. So each one of these games definitely has the potential and definitely will be very different as time progresses. So I don't want you guys to get caught up on the fact that, oh, well, I'm comparing it to this one now. This one here is like, okay, okay, I, I get it. These two, these two twins just got, like, you know, boy twin, girl twin. They were born right now. Yeah, they look very fucking similar, but five years from now, that boy don't look nothing like that girl, homie. You guys got to keep that in mind. It's going to be very, very different as the th time goes on. I think it depends on which one you feel for you personally, correct? If you're looking regularly, regular nostalgia, probably predecessor. If you're looking for futuristic progression, I'd say core. I mean, I'd say even those, like let's say for nostalgia, somebody that has spent all their Paragon time on Monolith, they know nothing about Legacy will come up in core and be like, bro, this is just like Paragon. They're going to get more nostalgia from monolith assets than they are from a legacy perspective. So it's all that's all going to vary on the individual person, whether it be futuristic progression, because even futuristic progression, maybe the progression that each one of these games takes varies on the person. So you can't even set that mindset per game. Like, it's, it's such an individual mindset that comes down to it whenever it comes to a preference of a game. It's very hard to generalize as to the game when it should be on the individual itself. Probably the one I feel closer to Paragon, yeah. Because I'll tell you this, anybody that saw gameplay from Predecessor, that, that hit home and reminds you of Legacy a thousand percent. Like, if you played Legacy, it was like, I remember learning Iggy here. Oh my god, this is awesome. But even when you're looking at this, this looks like a better updated version of the Monolith map. So I know so many people that only played Monolith. I knew people that were on my comp team that only played Monolith at that point. Never played Legacy before. So I can easily, like, it's, it's all going to vary on the independent. OP is thick, bro. OP is huge. 
Opie's huge. They need to get that man on hydroxy cut. <laughs> Brad, <laughs> you giggling Opie over there looking like he just stole the cookie jar and freaking kept it. Like watch. Walk go to Opie right now and I promise you Kalari's the size of his thigh. Watch it. That thigh is bigger than Kalari. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That thigh is the size of one of the old raptors. Everybody put that in mind. <laughs> Look at that size. His thigh is the size of one of the old raptors. The mini raptors, not the big one. Mini raptor. <laughs> have we even have we gone over to Fangtooth yet? I don't know if we have. We have not actually, could we? We can indeed. She's closer to his calf. You're not wrong. This boy don't need no milk, bruh. That man got calcium for days. What you talking about? Shout out to Mangoose. Thank you, Rain, for the shout out. What up, homie? Could we go look at Dawn's side walls for a second? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll look at all the walls. Dude, the fact that they made these creatures like just over twice the size of Karlari. Like, you literally have to look up to look at the health bar. But would you really, honestly, I would be looking just level to the ground in case somebody comes up and I got to target them, you know, like that, and then just glance up real quick every time I'm looking at the health bar. Just kind of be like, okay, half health. All right, cord health. All right, almost dead, and just died. Jump over the wall. Mm, dude, that adds. I like it. I like the fact that you can ward. And there's three different paths to come from, but all of them can be spotted by one good ward. Or just the two general paths leading to the center if you put a ward in the middle. If you're trying to be like a chimera in there with that regen. You can just place one ward out in the main entrance. But then you're kind of still running the fact that, hey, you saw them coming, so you expect them, but you're still kind of stuck in there. So, hmm. Interesting. I played Muriel mid when Paragon first came out because I was new to MOBAs and the ult was more useful so I could get back into lane. Also, she had damage back then. Yo, Muriel mid. Muriel damage. LOL. When that Q used to shred people before nerf. Yeah. I Good remember times. watching uh, Ace run that, run the Muriel mid. Right? Muriel OP lit. <laughs> <laughs> you can walk under him. I don't think the model will let you, actually. Did you play Wraith mid or carry? I never actually liked Wraith. I never really liked his kit personally. But uh, if I played him, actually, I play. I even play. I played Wraith support when I played him. Actually, just because the YOLO factor, rewind somebody, double ADC status, kind of almost just a troll. But if I was actually being sweaty, I never played Wraith. I never really liked his kit too much personally. I'm just ready for one of these to hurry up and come out so I can play Wraith. Wraith isn't confirmed for any of the rosters on, for the near future, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Mongoose? Yeah, not, not, not for the alphas, no. Yeah. So, I mean... Go ahead. I know one that people really loved and really want to see come back, but it's going to be a while, is Grux. Because Grux came with very, very incomplete assets from Epic. Really? So it's going to be harder for them to implement Grux than pretty much any other hero. Um, from the animation standpoint, they may have to create their own animations. I will say, I, I mess mm -hmm. around in the in, in Epic playing with the assets uh, a oh, bit myself. And every okay. time I go in there, there's a few more updates. Like um, Richter barely had anything at first, but now you can actually... They have the animation for him throwing Riplash and stuff like that. Oh, like they're so actually they releasing those in the game. Unreal? In, in Unreal, I yeah. mean, as for the content, wow, okay. It's kind of old. Latin, what are all the confirmed characters? Ooh, do you have an updated roster list by any chance that you could read off? Uh, <laughs> Let me go to the website. To Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to the website. Hold up. Core. Um, wow, this is actually... Would it be Metabuff, right? Metabuff.com? Yeah. And then you can scroll through each hero. See if I can pull that up over here. All right, here we go. Ba, ba, ba. Where would we go, Core? 
All right. So alpha roster. You guys ready? I'm going to read them off one at a time. Countess, Decker, Feng Mao, Gideon, Greystone, Kalari, Chimera, Bellica, Murdoch, Muriel, Narbash, Rampage, Sevrog, Sparrow, Twin Blast. That is the confirmed first 15, I think it is, right? That I just counted. The first 15 for the alpha on core. Do you speak French, amigo? I do not, Puzu. I'm sorry, my friend. I speak English, Spanish, and a little bit of Portuguese. But no French as of yet. Working on it. It's not working so good, though. It's not working very well. <laughs> Dormant said, so basically, overthrow. LOL. Uh, I mean, kind of. I mean, yo, honestly, the fact that, that uh, the Rocket Mania guy got that much stun as an individual, it's just kudos Insane. to him. It's kudos Insane. to him. He did stop working on that project completely because he, it was just like a kind of like a stepping stone. He'd never even played Paragon ever in his life. But when he got all the assets and, you know, while a bunch of people saying, yo, do this, do that, do this, do that. He just let people play it while he was working on a game. And then he used that as a portfolio builder. He went to a, a game expo and said, hey, this is what I created. And he landed a job at a, a gaming company. So it served his purpose. And then he just stopped working on it. Oh, I can speak Spanish. Yo también. What do you think about Drongo? Honestly, I got to say this. A lot of the later heroes of Epic Paragon lifespan, I think were just like they kind of just inserted them in there to kind of like help balance everything with a hero instead of fixing the balance that should have been done 100% there. That's why they just kept on slowly balancing on each hero as every update came on and everything. Because they wanted to stick so hardcore to that three weeks promise that at that point they were like, you know, you know what? We we kind of got a little problem with CC right now, but we still need to make a hero. Why don't we make a hero when he ults, he backs up. So he's still an ADC, but he has mobility. He's like, bro, that's going to be great. That's like all they're going to be focusing on here for like the next three weeks while we release an, a patch update on, on the, uh, the CC or whatever. Like uh, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of their balancing was more, like I feel at least, was just a really like after the thought. We said they did really good balancing movements and then they, all, they did some crazy balancing things that they added in there. But uh. Yeah, I don't know. I, th I, I wish they would have done, I put more thought into balancing before they implemented things like Deathcrawler, for example. Um, or, uh, oh my God, what was that one card that gave everybody around you 50% more damage? Red Zone? Red Zone. Like a Red Zone, for example. Like thinking more balancing options on that side instead of like, yo, that would be lit. That'd be <laughs> awesome. And then after the fact that they find out that freaking Grux with Deathcrawler is broken. You're like, oh, feel me like, hey, all you guys needed to do was just test Deathcrawler on every character, maybe for a month, and you would have found that out yourself. They tried to fix issues with the meta by introducing heroes that would new meta. break those, the, the meta, like Yin, like when long, long stuns like Stasis Bomb and Rampage Boulders were a problem, they introduced Yin, like, hey, here's a way to kick those, those back at them, and they just kept trying to do that, and it just oh, never worked. Like Terra? <laughs> <clears throat> exactly, Terra, exactly. Yeah, so much uh, problem with CC, Drongo, we'll just give you an anti CC character. Yeah, exactly. As far as Drongo goes, I think if Drongo would have been released in Legacy, he would have been the most amazing carry in the game. You think However, so? He was, yeah, I think so. I think he was just released way too late in the process um, hmm. because his kit was balanced around actually hitting your shots, but they introduced Not wrong. him. Like grenades and shit, yeah. Yeah. And they entered, well, rad rounds. You had to actually hit the rad rounds or it just did nothing. And, um, but they introduced him during a time when the t time to kill was really fast. So his yeah. rad rounds, they might kill somebody, but he's already dead by the time they die. Whereas Legacy, it was a little bit longer time to Yo, kill. So could you imagine a Drongo during Legacy? That would have changed the whole game. Yeah, it would have been great. Um, but he would just, that would have changed the game. 